some, some... Oh. Oh. doesn't normally do that, but yeah. <laughs> I just started doing that. In fact, uh, you are consenting to be recorded. Yes. There we go. And if I go click here. So I've just written down uh, the Mori Coastal 50 Mile Race Director um, is the title. Yeah. And um, welcome to Spear Speaks, Carl Gregg, the race director for the upcoming Mori Coastal Series. Uh, yep. Post in uh, Spear Physiotherapy, go live, click that. I'm more nervous on this than I was in the, in my, my own podcast. Eh? <laughs> that's, that's just live now, yeah. Ah. Um, welcome, Kyle, to Spear Speaks. Uh, thank you very much for giving up your time. And uh, I was about to say, a man of many, many hats. And you've got a, a belter on tonight. And it wasn't even the Chewbacca one I was expecting. <laughs> so uh, tonight, um, man of many hats, podcast coach, but also recently selected for Scotland and also GB athlete. But tonight it's about your job as a race director um, where you're going to be the race director for the Moray Coastal Series or the Moray Trail Series. And we're here to talk about the 50 mile one, which uh, I've selfishly got you on tonight so I can learn as much as I can from you so I can uh, help others to perform in the day, but also maybe help myself in my first ever 50 mile run. So when is the event, Kyle? And, and what can you tell us about the the, the the weeks leading up to the 50 miler. Well, well, that's uh, I feel like, like I said, thanks for having me on the show. It's uh, I say the show, it's it is a show. Um, I, I feel like I'm in the hot seat now, you know, as interviewee, not the interviewer, <laughs> uh, as as it would be if I was doing Tartan Running Shorts podcast. Uh, so yeah, I mean, like as James said, I'm the race director for the Murray Way Ultras, um, which is this is its first. Hopefully, full year of um, of launch. You know the the launch. Um, I took over race the race the, the race of the Murray Way. Sorry, not the Murray Way. The Speyside Way Ultras last year. Um, Sarah Louise Grigger was the previous race director, so I, I took that over. Um, and because she was stop stepping down, and I I you know she 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 said you know she gave me all the information and put you know got put me through my my my. Uh, put me through the motions and and that, and that here I am. And then I decided, I thought there's, there's a muddy way. There's an actual, as part of the long distance walks in Scotland. And, um, and one of them's, well, actually a few of them are, 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 are it's the, the Dava way, which is um, from Granton to Forest. And then you've got the muddy, sorry. Then you've got the Speyside way, which is from all the way from, in fact, it goes past Aviemore all the way to Bucky. Uh, and then the final one is the muddy, the muddy coastal trail. Uh, so that's the one that you've signed up to, James. And and it's have indeed, the, yeah. It's the first one of the year. Uh, we were actually meant to have the Davaway Ultra. Um, it was in April, or early April, in fact, mid mid April rather. Uh, but that had to get pushed pushed back into November because of COVID. And um, and you know we 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 certainly did the right thing. It wouldn't have been that great a, a race with only you know people going in waves of one uh on their own as it, it and uh so yeah so we decided to push that back into november but we're we're going all guns blazing for the muddy coastal trail that's going to take place in just under two weeks time james uh on saturday the 12th of june which i hope you're familiar with the date uh <laughs> it's about <laughs> days it is circled in every calendar in so that's it. it's a bit worrying you asking me the date but uh, <laughs> i'm sure you know um so yeah that's the muddy coastal trail 50 which is going to be 50 miles uh which it's going to start in forest and it's going to finish in Cullen. and uh you know I, obviously i'm from forest myself uh, i grew up there as a young lad and i've got a huge passion for the trails and the the muddy area and i really wanted to you know start the muddy way ultras because i love running and i love ultras and i love the area and just kind of give back to the to the running community and and people like yourself you know this is your first time 
transitioning into uh, you know as a distance runner to a, a, an ultra runner and and you know I'm, I love just having the opportunity to give you know ha- seeing people have the opportunity to to get you know to get out, out of the comfort zone yet in a controlled environment hopefully so uh, it's, it's yeah. such a beautiful um, part of the world as well and uh, to have somebody from that being as their home hometown knows the area knows it so well and and has the passion that you've just explained there to host a series and and one of the tough things leading into the the race has been obviously COVID um, with Maori numbers being slightly higher than than mm-hmm. surrounds there was the level three versus level two and and there was a little bit of uh, anxiousness about whether the race would go ahead for people that were outside Maori itself and massive uh, kudos to yourselves and the, the team you've got around about you to to get the race to go ahead still and also to um, keep it going in level three and then obviously the restrictions have dropped down a little too which allows people out with to to travel so you did mention in one of the emails that you could get a refund and i was saying to you before this is that having the the structure that you've put with multiple races and having the the training structure that it's given me has helped help manage a yeah. lot of things not just training for a, a race but help to to manage with restrictions help to manage with lockdown help to manage with um the mental battles that everyone faces day to day but also it's helped with a physical point of view and, and i'll probably safely say i've never been in this shape before when i've been running so it's it's a massive kudos to to yourself and other race directors who have been battling them with some of the legislations to get the races to go ahead. So thank you very much, Cal, for persevering oh. and, and getting, it, <laughs> getting it going. But one thank of my, my quick I questions. Feel, I, feel like, uh, I feel like I've done your training for you, eh? So, <laughs> yeah. so you just need to run it now. <laughs> right, that's it. Well, um, well no, you're, 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 you're right enough about the, you know, the restrictions the whole of Scotland was placed, you know, uh, when they went into level two in, in Murray, of the wee, you know, the wee, the wee Murray uh, shy we are, are still on level three and god knows what people are up to uh there but it's fantastic and you know any any you know people who are watching this and are listening to this uh who are from murray what a great job they they, they did in just getting everyone vaccinated and and just controlling the virus it's uh it, you know, it's a, a huge kudos to for, for me personally anyway because what we didn't want to do was to uh, i mean we we're fully expecting to to have to cut, postpone it and push it into later in the year, potentially into next year. Um, but we did, we were hopeful that we could get, our, you know, the money down from tier three into tier two. Um, and it was sque- certainly squeaky bum time, James. I'm not <laughs> yeah. going to lie. It was squeaky bum time. Uh, but, but, it's, but, you know, it's been great. And and one thing I, I would say as well is we, we do the race, for the race to go ahead, it's not just a case of let our guard down. We still have, a number of um, COVID mitigation measures that are in place and which are set by our governing body, uh, Scottish Athletics, which in, in itself we're, we're licensed uh, under uh, under as well for race insurance purposes and, and general guidance as well, which, which certainly they've been really helpful for us. Uh, so there'll be a, a number of things in place on the day that's going to, you know, allow the athletes to have a really safe race um, over and above just obviously just COVID. Uh, as well so so yeah that's that's and, and also as well we've we've got um the forestry commission as well they've approved uh us to run through the the resile forest and, and lossy forest and again the event sector have got uh, a number of sort of covid guidance general guidance as well that you know the event event organizers and and and, and the participants have to to adhere to and, and to, to follow as well so no, brilliant. And uh, so it is going ahead. We're 12 days out. What would your top tips be for Taper, first of all? Um, so we're 12 days out. What's your top tips that you give us for, for tapering towards the event itself? Oh, I like this. You know, you know what? James gave me a, <laughs> about a, a two minute warning with this one. So I haven't got this is uh, off the fag packet here. But <laughs> Uh, seriously though you know as a, as a running coach uh, I have got some general sort of um, advice but one thing I'm going to say is now this this isn't there's not a black and white answer to this one um, I, I, I think as as a general rule of thumb what I always say is practice and test out what the best taper is for you um, you know there's such a range of, of tapers in 
and defining what a taper is is also really important. Um, you know, some people might define a taper as just let, you know just taking a real you know your foot off the gas in terms of your training. You know, not doing any big runs, big sessions, and things like that. And then someone else might say, you know, I only need a couple of days taper. Uh, you know, they'll just take their foot off the gas ever so slightly. So there's a real mix of, of what you would define as a taper and what the best type of taper is. So what I'm going to say to anyone listening who is maybe taking part in the race or have, have got their own race lined up is, you know, think about what you've done in the past. Think about the races that you've run. Think about the training sessions that you've maybe performed at and you've performed them really well. And, you, and, and, and you know, what, what was your lead up like for that? Um, and if you felt on the day really sluggish, um maybe you need to go back and see right maybe i did too many miles that week or you know i did a really high intensity session two days beforehand which potentially may may have led to a, a you know a, a real um you know a, a bit of a, a an under par performance um and but on the contrary to that you might have you might have let your guard down too soon um and you might have just just thought, you know, I'll lie back and just, you know, eat all the foods and, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> you know, not do any running and maybe put on weight as well. So, and, and what I'm going to say is I've been, as a runner myself, and I've been in two situations, you know, in both, both of those spectrums. I've, I've tapered too long. I've also tapered, uh, you know, too short. And I've, I've, I felt, I felt kind of under, you know, that my performance is fairly under par. So for me... Cool? Goldilocks thing, isn't it? So, I mean, it's just got to get it just right, and it's yeah, so specific to the person as well. Exactly, exactly. Um, so for me, the the sort of best taper that worked that ha- works for me is something like a sort of ten to twelve day taper, um, where that's you know we're we're, we're talking. I'll, I'll start kind of having again. I'm gonna use this word squeaky bum time, like you know mid ten days out. Really, you know, that's kind of when I, I really think about what's my session is going to look like for the, for the next 10 days. If it's an ultra that I'm going to be running, um, what I might do is on, you know, just take, do, do my last sort of big session, uh, which might be something fairly sharp, you know, just a bit of a sharpener, uh, like something like six by a mile at sort of 10 K pace or half marathon pace that's specific to the actual race as well. Um, so that's a little bit faster. Um, and then at the weekend, I'll do something like a, a sort of longish type tempo. So some, if, if I was doing a 50 kilometers or 50 miles, I'll probably do something like 10 to 12 miles at a decent pace. Um, so like probably about sort of um, marathon pace, maybe a slightly bit slower than that. So oh, maybe it, it, it probably would be something like, yeah, marathon to 50K pace. Um, so there's a good level of effort there, but nothing that's going to, you know, really hurt me, you know, really kind of put me out for a while. It's, it's just over an hour of work. Um, and then I'll just start putting my, putting my feet up for the rest of the week. Uh, you know, on Monday, I'll have a, an easy day. Tuesday, I'll, I'll probably do a session on the Tuesday, but it'll be a shortish type session. So it wouldn't be anything longer than 30 minutes of, of work or effort. Um, and, and it wouldn't be hugely fast either. It would be something around about half marathon pace. Uh, or, or marathon pace um, and then that that would be it you know the rest of it would just be continuous easy runs really really easy runs just making sure that I'm hydrated for the week and I'm, I'm eating enough food and, and and I'm not you know I'm, I'm not I'm getting I'm relaxed I'm I'm not doing anything really different during that week yeah. Yeah. I'm not doing and this is something I'm sure you've been you tell a lot of your your clients as well you know don't do anything different on race week. Do things that are perfect and work for you, and uh, and and it's all been kind of tried and tested. One, I, I know you're about to say a question, but I want to share this with you. Uh, that I did a race uh, two years ago. It was the Mozart 100 kilometers. I think it might have been three years ago. This happened. I was wearing a pair of flatties, and I'm, I'm sh- I think I've told you this story. Uh, I bought them out, you know, when I was in 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 Salzburg, uh, and I was there five days before the race, and um, and I just stuck on my flatties and and walked around the city for the you know the whole day, and and I came back and I had this Achilles problem, like like I was running, I was trying to attack, you know, my last sort of 
sort of 30 minute ish tempo on, on this decent trail. And uh, I just felt my Achilles and it was just an agony. I had to stop. And I thought, bloody hell, I've got 100 kilometers to run in. <laughs> <laughs> it's literally the, the bit of advice we, we give out as well. Don't do anything different and, and just wear comfortable shoes. Shoes you've been in for a wee bit of time. Don't, don't buy anything new. And I remember seeing it and in, in, in later hearing the story as well. I was like, okay. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so everyone should put away their, their flatties. And... That's it, yeah. <laughs> Don't wear your flatties. Uh, another, bit, another bit of advice I'll, I'll also share is, um, I mean, you know, like Hulch is a long way, 50 miles a long way. Try not to do too much walking as well that week because a lot of folk will think, well, I'm not running so I can walk a little bit more. But you're not used to walking too much certainly i i, you know, I'm, I'm, I don't walk that much but i'm not going to go out and just start it's walking time on feet isn't it yeah i'm on feet still and, and even you know too much if you do a four mile run and you walk four miles it's still four miles that you've had to complete and had to uh you know carry that that weight over as well yeah. and, and you might not think it's you know aerobically demanding but you'll know as well you've still got a little bit of stress in your in your body there as well certainly i think it's trying to do as little as you can that causes stress so the body doesn't have to repair and regenerate on top of what's already got to repair and regenerate from your your big training block and you can back me up on this or or not is that your your training doesn't you don't feel the benefits of your training when you do the training it it tends to be a week or two afterwards so it's, it's the body's got to absorb that training and and the harder blocks are often felt in the weeks after rather than during the blocks themselves. And that brings one nicely. So it's is my first 50 miler. And like you alluded, it's a bloody long way in a car, let alone on, on feet. <laughs> yeah. And what was what was your first uh, 50 mile run? And also um, what were the, the mistakes or what were the learnings that you had from your first 50 mile uh, race? Um, I don't think I've ever done a 50 mile before. <laughs> <laughs> but my first uh, first my ultra first, first ultra um my first ultra was was actually the it was a trial for the the world trail running championships for the gb team in howarth is it how yeah howarth hobble it was in in england and uh yeah 50 kilometers and it was off the back of a decent marathon i had um so i felt in really good shape uh i was really excited for it and um and i ended up I ended up getting in the GB team, which, uh, you know, I'm, it's kind of changed my running career and my running life, really, because it just gave me another, because um, as, as a runner, I've been running since I was eight years old and, uh, you know, started off doing track and cross country. And um, and then I started going into the hills, doing some hill running. And I then went to university and didn't really run as much. And, and then uh, I kind of thought, you know, I, I got a coach called Lewis Walker, who's been instrumental to my training and my development over the last sort of eight to nine years and I've really just dropped my times right down uh from marathon to to 10k to 5k and uh but anyway I've lost my track here sorry uh it was was bit yeah so started doing ultras and it was yeah just just amazing I, I definitely wouldn't, wouldn't look back but the, the, on the day the, of the race, like, felt really good, had all my kit ready, but I really did struggle um, organising my kit because when you do a road race, a 10K or a half or a marathon, you only, you just need to bring yourself and maybe a couple of gels and make sure, you, obviously, make sure you've got trainers on, you know? That always helps. <laughs> uh, certainly those those pogo sticks everywhere. Um, and, uh, and, 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 it, but you had to have a race vest. You had to have your essential kit. You had to, you know, make sure that you've got enough fuel to last you such a period of time. There's a lot to think about. And that's one thing. I mean, I managed to do all that, uh, but it was, I, I, I didn't panic. I just, I felt like I left it probably more to the last minute. And I didn't really, I didn't really practice wearing what I was going to wear and, you know, and the run up in my training runs and things. So, I, you know, I had this race pack on and, bloody water bottles for you know my soft flask was jumping out my race vest and I'm running like this you know and you know I look like an idiot but uh but that's something I've I, I'll certainly recommend make sure that you practice and wearing what you you're going to wear in the day um and make sure that you also fuel you know you, you fuel on your training runs as well and, and make sure that you feel in terms of the intensity the intensity or the pace that you want to run your your ultra um, 
make sure you practice at that pace and intensity when you're doing your fuel and then your hydration as well, uh, rather than just doing an easy run and, and practicing your fuel and all that, because your, your body will respond differently to, to that sort of pace and you might not necessarily need all that fuel. So your gut's going to react slightly different if you run easily and if you run at the pace that you want to, you want to get, you want to get your body used to fueling at the pace that you or the intensity that you're going to uh, run at basically. Um, I think it's so too as well, because when we did the, the dive away and um, the pace is a lot faster than what the training has been for yeah. the, um, the Maori coast and the feeling has been completely different. Yeah. Like I got the feeling wrong on the, the day of the 50 K and, and you're right, I was that person who ran the first kilometre and I had to hold my water bottles down. So I'm running <laughs> yeah. like that. And then I found out there's a lot of elastic band you can put around the right. and keep That's them in. It. So yeah. Yeah, yeah. And yeah, it's a lot of things like that. But So one thing that, I was going to say was, uh, just to finish off there, was, you know, not practice at the pace that you're going to run at. Pra- make Practice the type of fuel that you're going to use. The frequency that you're going to use that fuel at as well is, is hugely important as well. So um that's that's something and also re- do your research as well make sure that you know where the aid stations are uh how far in the aid stations are what they're going to be serving on on the day as well because you might expect that there's going to be these fancy pants uh you know uh i don't know active root gels you know and a, a sachet you might not get that in fact you won't get that because <laughs> there's that there so that's you know that's something you've got to bear in mind as well um is there going to be bag drops for the ultra as well? You know, if there's going to be a bag drop, take advantage of what works for you and what fuels work for you that you're not going to get out in, on the table and in, in the aid stations. It might just be uh, simply water and uh, bananas in, in, in some, some cereal bars. Uh, yeah. And, and that, that's it. Um, and obviously some, maybe some active root powder, which is going to be in the <laughs> sports drink on, on the aid stations. Um, so yeah, just make sure that you you know exactly what you're getting on the course, um, and make sh- if there is a bag drop, make sure that you've got all the things that you need in that bag drop. Because uh, for the Murray Coastal Trail, 25 mile in, you're gonna have um, well, you've got a bag drop, so you know you might need new shoes, you might uh, you might need to you uh, get, get get that sort of fuel, replace that fuel that you've just had for the first sort of 25 miles as well. So um, yeah. Yeah. It was really quite interesting because I remember, um, so part of my research for the 50 miler was to yeah. watch uh, a lot of videos on, on YouTube as well. And I know that watching videos is not the same, but watching like the, the Barclay Marathons, and it was Guy Robbins, how he did his transitions into the aid station because with the Barclay Marathons, it's the, the loops and they come back in, they get a certain amount of time where they've got to refuel and go again. Yeah. Uh, also, I remember listening to the podcast that yourself and Tom did when you were doing the UTMB and how... Tom had to get everything ready for you and it's that kind of the kilometer or two out from the aid station having a, like a mental list in your head what you're going to try and get from the next aid station so yeah. I think that although quite new to the the distance and very naive to the distance it's looking at how other people do it and learning from other people and I think that what you mentioned there about the the things that are going to be the aid station is if you know what's going to be there from a banana active route and maybe a secret bar too you can prepare your own stuff for that that bag yeah. drop itself and yeah. you know, some some great advice there and you mentioned about knowing where the um the aid stations are so i've actually wanted to share my screen with the the route if that's okay and we can maybe oh, go absolutely. through the route and you can describe what we're likely to come against um at the certain parts of the the route if that works is, uh, yeah you're testing me here now hey eh? you know this the question let's interpret that question does the race director know his own route <laughs> <laughs> doesn't have yeah, you know how to share his screen yeah. oh, I'm sure you know. I'll, I'll fill in the gap so the only other you know back to the question about um you know what, what did you learn in your first ultra uh that actual race although i qualified I actually went the wrong way um <laughs> and and i ended up having it was like a three or four minute detour uh another guy who was with me he also went the wrong way and because I was, you know, hoping to get into the team, there was top two were guaranteed to get in the team. Um, so I was panicking. I really was panicking. But the funny, the, the, it makes it even more funnier. Now, I'll get to this in a minute because it's right on my screen there. I downloaded, I had a watch and, and I downloaded the GPX 
and I, I even didn't even believe my my watch. <laughs> so I kept going straight on. <laughs> so it, you know, it just shows you how. In yeah, I, I mean, I, I I went the wrong way, even though I had it downloaded in my watch. Just trust. If there's a GPX there, don't don't just trust what a GPX says because it could be wrong. It could be a diversion. Do your do your homework. You know that's one thing when it comes to ultra running. It's not just a, a couple of hundred. It's not just an 800 meter, 5k park run. There's a bigger element to this now, and and you my our race is going to be well mitigated in terms of risk, and um, it's going to be well marshaled, well signposted. We've got Murray Coastal signposts as well. You know, just keep the the seat at your left, you know, <laughs> uh, and and crack on to to Cullen. But you know, ser- seriously, there's a bit of there's definitely a bit of research, a little bit of homework. Wreck the route if you can, folks, and, and 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 if you can't, that's okay. You know, just take your time. If you do go the wrong way, don't panic. Just you know, take a deep breath. Re- look, get your bearings right. You know, you're not going to lose a huge amount of time uh, because it's fifty bloody miles. You know, it's it's not just 50, 50 meters. You, you've got time to re to sort it out. And like I did for the my first ultra, I ended up finding my way back. I didn't panic. I kept my pace. And then I got on the team, and and even though I got a few minutes uh, slower than I wanted to, so you know you can you can bounce back from these things. Uh, you know it's so yeah, just believe in your believe in your ability when it comes to navigation. <laughs> <laughs> so it starts in um, Grant Park, or yeah. for the weekend it's going. Is it the Active Route Park? The that, sponsors taking over, or that's uh, that's right, yeah, yeah. Uh, so you'll, you'll see some active root flags. Uh, our our hydration sponsors, our non-alcoholic hydration sponsors, I must add. <laughs> so the first part I was split into um, like ten to twelve k's, Kyle. So it was the first 10, 10 to twelve k takes us from forest itself through to uh, Findhorn. What are the what's the terrain like, and what's the the, the best part of the the first uh, ten to twelve kilometers? The best part of the, the the first part there is the road out of forest, eh? You know, once you stay in forest. Uh, so no, I mean, you know, the, in terms of the actual start, uh, you know, you get you get out of the Grand Park and then you just go through the the town of forest and then uh, you head you actually head past a, a distillery and you've got a, a fairly uh, a nice wee country road from forest to Kinloss, um, which is actually part of the the um, Ben Roma 10k that's organized by Forest Harriers. Um, so it's really flat. It's it, 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 lots of fields. It's it's really nice. And you start, as you approach Can Loss, you start seeing the Findhorn Bay, which, you know, as at seven in the morning, it's going to be absolutely stunning if you get a good day with the sun coming up. Um, it's really, really flat. It's, you know, as I said, it is, you know, until you get to Findhorn, it's all on the road. Um, but really, really flat, and and it's it's yeah, it's it's absolutely fine. When you get to Kin Loss, um, you you then on the right hand side you'll go past the barracks. So you might you know you might see a couple of a couple of planes flying past. You know, uh, you you, ne- you never know. And uh, on the on your left hand side you'll have Findhorn Bay, which is you know it's absolutely stunning again. Um, and you know, lots of boats kicking about, but I, I'm sure you'll be in the zone, uh, James. But uh, but you know it's it's on it's on a cycle path as well where you'll okay. be running, so you'll you'll be fine. And then on the you know as you start approaching Findhorn, you get to the eco village, um, which again is a, a sort of self uh, a sort of self sustainable community, which has uh, been part of the the natural, well, it's been part of Forrest's history for a good number of decades now. And uh, yeah, yeah, all walks of life um, are, are kind of, are living there as well. So, you, you, you know, it's, I, I've got a few friends back in the day, but I don't know, I don't think any of them are running actually. So didn't convince them, but anyway. <laughs> um, yeah, so then you get into Findhorn and then this is kind of where you, you, you'll veer off to the right-hand side and then you start, you're officially now on the coastline um, and then you're just going through some of the dunes there, some of the sand dunes, uh, but you're not going up and down them, which you'll be pleased to know. That'll be an absolute ball buster that, you know, here you go and up and down these massive sand dunes, folks. I think I'll be getting a lot of curses. <laughs> so it's, it's fairly runnable underfoot. Um, and, you know, looking at the weather as it stands, 
Uh, I think we're going to have a dry day for it, but you never, you didn't hear that on Spears. <laughs> Is that a, is that a um, declaration there for the weather? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's recorded. It's not, is it? Yeah. Uh, and then, yeah, you, you had a, you had sort of a couple of two to three miles, and then you're into Rosario Forest, which is um, again, it's just a sandy underfoot, but good hard pack sandy sandy trails. Um, and then, yeah, you, you you know you end up getting you in Rosario Forest for quite a while, a good few miles. And then you're heading quite to, rough underfoot, or is it easy runnable? Yeah, good, foot nice and runnable. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You've, you've, I mean, the, the thing is, even if you were to, even if it was to rain, you probably would be fine under. You, you probably it'd be quite grippy. It's yeah. you're not going to really slip unless it's torrential rain where you might because it's sand. You know, it's hard packed sand, so it's fairly absorbed. You know, it's going to just absorb pretty quickly. So, uh, yeah, yeah. And then and, you're into Berghead. Uh, and then you head head along Berghead to to Hopeman, which again is all fairly runnable along the coastline there. Um, you've got a couple of you know between Hopeman and Lossy my feet. You've got a couple of trails that, so not technical trails, but certainly um, narrower trails that you you'll have to contend with, but nothing nothing that's hugely technical. Um, Nothing that's dangerous, just stunning coastline. Uh, you know, some of the cliff tops up there as well. You, you go through the towns as well of, of Hopeman, so you, you know, just make sure that you're, uh, yeah, you're keeping your eye out for some of the sights and sounds and smells of, of Hopeman and Lossy Mouth and whatnot. So, yeah, uh, but yeah, as as we're going into from into Lossy Mouth, we've got again stunning coastline, um, and you go you go along the. The sand, sandy beach for a while, which is really, really just you'll have the lighthouse on the right hand side. Uh, you go through Lossy Mouth, and then that's your mile 25, which that's where your bag drop's going to be. Um, uh, that number four one, yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, when, once you get to your bag drop, it's going to be fairly well obvious, and there's, there's going to be a few bags there, but. What I'm going to say is, and I'll say this in the, the briefing as well uh, for all the runners, and, and in general, you know, if you're doing an ultra, then they take your your holiday bag because uh, you know the poor the poor volunteer marshal or race director has to, you know, he has to carry all those bags and, and put them all in a line. And and one thing that we're going to be really careful of, of, of as well is um, obviously hygiene and making sure that the bags are are going to be, you know. Um, they're going to be sterile and, and so you'll get your own bag to put in the bag if that makes sense uh, so the smaller your bag obviously we want you to make sure you've got your essential items but we don't want uh, you know a tent or you know a, a tent for mile 25 you know you've, there's a there's a cut off for these events you know so uh, but I'm sure that won't apply to you James so you're fine here's, here's a question for you so having watched I think it was Rod did a, a fast uh, camp and also uh, Jamie Pallister did a, a, a video for the second part from Lossy to Cullen. Would you change shoes if you were running? If I was running, uh, I pers- I personally wouldn't because, um, I mean, I, it's well known to some of the listeners and Tom, I wear my Zoom flies for anything I do, you know, even if it goes up up and down a nice a nice wall I'll still wear them there's no <laughs> fucking grip on them you know <laughs> but uh, no no I mean I, it's up to it's it's up to I think it's it's a confidence thing if you're if you're used to I mean if it's a good dry day then I would stick to road shoes um, and yeah. that's personally my 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 advice but uh, it's 50 miles you, you also want some cushioning in there one thing one thing about trail shoes is um Sometimes they sit, they, they weigh up the cushioning versus the the grip, and if there's a good grip, there's sometimes maybe not enough cushioning. Um, I know a lot of the guys and the runners are wearing the speed goats, which have got a mix of you know good good traction, um, but also good cushioning as well. Um, the other thing is as well, like you know, I. I I think I think you should have an. I think when it comes to the race day, whatever you guys have been training in, and this, it comes back to the whole like pre- prepping for your races. Make sure that what you've been training in 
has been working for you. Um, and I've done this in the past and, I, and I'll still continue to do it. I'll wear a shoe without really testing it out fully. Uh, and it's, it might be fine, uh, but 50 miles is a long way. <laughs> so if you get your shoe choice wrong and you haven't prepped for wearing that shoe, then you know the, it could it could cause you a little bit of of, of issues and, and number of challenges. So yeah, in terms of you know maybe the cushioning, lack of cushioning, maybe you're slipping about, uh, maybe you're yeah you're not you you you're just you're getting too many blisters because it's a hot day. So um, but you know just overall in terms of the actual race, it's not too bad underfoot. It isn't too bad underfoot. The majority. Is a mix of road, sand, and trail. Um, so if you've got a decent road shoe uh, or a, a, a sort of trail shoe that's maybe not got too much aggressive uh, traction on it, then I think that'll be fine. Another thing as well, if you got you don't want your your sole, or it doesn't matter too much because if that's what you wear, that's what you wear. But personally, for me, I don't want a, a heavy trail shoe that's got a lot of traction on it because for the type of course it is, it's it's fairly runnable because it's along the coastline as well. So, yeah. Perfect. So we'll leave Lossy Mouth and then we'll head to, is it Kingston is the next bit? And is That's that, right, yeah. yeah so one, is, of the, or... one of the things about Lossy Mouth is uh, the bridge um, is is in, in disrepair. So we're having to take a little uh, little sort of detour around so we can't go, go straight across onto the, the beach. But we do, you know, we're still mainly on the trail anyway, so it's not it's it's not too bad. Um, so you go through the forest, you go through Lossy Forest, uh, and then you'll end up being in there for a good sort of three miles or so, and then you end up going towards Kingston, um, and then you'll approach Garmouth, uh, and then you will you will head into Spay Bay. Which is where the Dolphin Centre is. Oh, brilliant! Yeah. Uh, again, you can you can stop and take pictures if you want, James. But uh, <laughs> there's, uh, you, you'll be you'll be well. You you won't need to worry about the cutoff time. You're fine. And, and that's yeah, I might be a different place by then, Carl. <laughs> <laughs> and there's no cutoff times uh, June, you know, in, in each of the the um, the checkpoints or anything like that either. So not for this year, anyway. They're heading to is it Port Gordon? Yeah, Port Gordon. Yeah. So when you get, you know, you go through Port Gordon, this is part of the the Speyside Way Ultra route um, as well, and, and that'll take you into Bucky, which is where the finish is of the Speyside Way Ultra. Uh, and then you go past Bucky, and then you get to Portesi, uh, through into Findoc Findocti, and for, you know between sort of around Findocti area, it's it does get a little bit, you know, it can be a little bit slippy there, but only if it's a really wet day. The trails are, it's a sort of single track type trail, quite narrow in parts. Um, so just be aware of your feet in, the, your foot, your foot in there uh, between sort of, you know, the Findocti to put Nor Port Noki area as well. Um, the, the good thing is you go through the villages as well. So you get, you might get a bit of uh, cheering from the, 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 the sort of pub goers if, if it's a nice, uh, if it's a nice day, no doubt. So. <laughs> and where's the, the, infamous is it both fiddle rock that's right so uh yeah your your both fiddle rock is between them um, between i'll get us right here you've, you've put me, you've put me in a, a, an awkward somewhere position. there I don't, I don't know where it is eh? <laughs> <laughs> it's too far away from forest so uh yeah yeah your, your, your both fiddle rock is near port Noki. um so yeah where are you let me see. Um, I'm just zooming out just now. Uh, yeah, so you're just past you're, you're just past um, Port, Port Noki. So as you go past Port Noki, uh, you'll go along the trail um, and you'll see it on your, obviously on your left-hand side. Um, there's a slight detour to get to see, you know, so that you can check it out yeah, and then yeah. go back on your merry way as well. So, uh, yeah, and then you'll, you'll head past past there and you'll go towards your final sort of couple of miles into Cullen um which again is just absolutely stunning uh you'll you, you'll go along the the sort of coastal line as well uh and then you'll finish just under the viaduct oh, so, uh, yeah which is pretty amazing 
Um, and yeah, you'll be treated to some some happy volunteers and uh, and and also a beer as well from our, our good friends at Brewgooder who are going to oh, be oh wow yes the beer sponsors this year as well. Uh, yeah, I shouldn't have given that away now, eh? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we don't know yet. Don't <laughs> don't give away all your secrets. <laughs> <laughs> you have to get to them to get one. <laughs> So uh, one of the questions for the whole route is, um, what would what would you say is your favourite part of the route? Well, that's a good question. Um, I I personally love the Fintorn because it's early on as well. Uh, Fintorn to Burghead, I love that section because it's quite early on, and you know maybe as a me being a racer, I'll probably push it a lot there as well. I just find the trails just so runnable there. And, it's still hard, but you can really just get a good pace going. It's good underfoot. The the Rosile Forest is where my wife and I um, got some wedding photos as well. So I always... I was you, just... A... <laughs> <laughs> it kind of puts the, puts the sort of, the, the, the you know, the, the, the pain that you're feeling off a, a wee bit as well, because you're you're thinking about all the positive things that happen. Um, but yeah, rosile has been, yeah, I, I do like running through there, but you know some of the overall like some of the cl- the cl- cliff lines and the coast like the, the cliff edges are just just breathtaking you know for such a a sort of modest uh, area that Murray can be sometimes they don't shout about their their beauty spots enough I don't think um so I'm hoping you know that that kind of gets gets kind of um described as you're running through the the course folks and yeah I'm sure you'll you'll love it I mean, do you know what you just summed up there is that that Maury's so humble and it's 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 beauty and and to be able to to run along that coastline and run through little villages that that I've never been to or never yeah. seen and the way you've described them and the way you've kind of um, suggested the beauty there is just fantastic and it just makes you really more excited for it and uh, yeah no it's, I, what one thing that strikes me as well when I've been doing the recce's and running there everyone not everyone says hi but more people say hi than some of the other, you know, yeah. uh, places you run. Certainly where we are anyway. So you yeah. might, you know, I think, you know, just a friendly just bunch. Friendly, yeah. No, absolutely. Looking forward to it. Yeah. So now now we've finished. We've done the, the 50 miler. Uh, you mentioned a little bit about the beer at the end, but um, going forward, what other events is it? So the Moray um, Trail Series has multiple events, and this is the first one. Uh, what are the other events that if we should want to go further or go for a different run, what, what would be the the other routes that you have in the series itself? Yeah, so the, the idea of the um, the Murray Way Ultra race series is, was to try and make sure that we've got a mix of of kind of routes and distances that cater for, for everyone, uh, whether or not you're your first time ultra runner or you're a seasoned ultra runner. Um, one thing that that doesn't really we 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 kind of don't really have, and it's maybe something that that I'm kind of passionate about. I like to run ultras, not walk them. <laughs> no, and, and I don't mean that in a, a kind of big-headed way. What I'm saying is, I love mountains. I think they they've got their own place. But you know, you're not going to get a mountainous ultra in the races I've got. You you've got some lumps and bumps, uh, but not huge hills. Is is what I'm trying to say. So yeah. uh, they are runnable ultras, which potentially would would allow people who maybe want a runnable ultra and and, 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 and you know look, look to try and keep the legs going and you can play as quick as you can uh because there's some 50 kilometers i've 50k races i've done and it takes uh, hours and hours and hours compared to like a flat 50k which the dava way kind of is but there's a, a couple of of hills there anyway um but yeah so the idea is to really just make sure it's, it cares for many different ultra runners from the 50k event, which is a Dava Way one, which was going to be the first one, which is now in the 13th of November, there is still spaces for that one. And that could be a good transition from someone who's maybe, you know, done a half marathon or a marathon uh, and maybe wants to try what it's like to run five miles more than the marathon. So that's a good sort of um, a good sort of uh, transition. The other ones, the next race after the Murray Coastal Trail is going to be the Speyside Way Ultras. Uh, which is on the 28th of August. And there's two, two real 
uh, distances there. The first one is the original, which has been running for over 25 years now. Um, and it's, you know, it's, 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 in, it's amazing. It's had world champions who've, who've been on that, like Simon Pride, who was a world 100 kilometer champion. Don Ritchie, the late Don Ritchie, who was the, the 100 mile world record holder, uh, the late, yeah, as I said, um, he was, he actually was the race director for a while. Um, uh, so it's, yeah, it's great just, you know, being able to, to, you know, organize and keep the spirit of the space I'd way going. So that's the 37 mile ultra. Uh, and then there's also going to be a hundred kilometer, uh, event as well. The hundred kilometer event is going to go from Avi Moore all the way to Bucky, uh, and follow the space side way trail and the original one starts in Balan Dalek and, and meanders its way down to uh, Bucky as well. So, um, and then the final couple we, we have is the full Muddy Way 100 mile, which is going to be in the 2nd of October. Uh, and that's it's in, essentially linking all the three of, all three of the races, the Space Side Way, the Dava Way and the Muddy Coastal Trail. Um, and uh, yeah, and then the Dava Way 50 kilometers, as I said, is going to be on the 13th of, of November. Which was going was in April, but now is in November. And, uh, yeah, that's that. Yeah, that's uh, yeah. Some great, great uh, races there, and and I've I've always been that person is that why would I why would I want to run longer than a marathon? And it's not until you actually <laughs> you sit down, you sit down, and and I think it was actually listening to David Goggins' podcast or David Goggins' book saying. Yeah. How far can you run? And I'm like, oh, I don't know, David. I don't know how far I could run. And he goes, No, how far can you really run? And I'm like, Oh God, I don't know. And it's not until you actually sit down. And it's amazing what the the body can achieve with consistency and also with a little bit of structure. And yeah, it's um, no longer it's about going fast over five. It's more for how long can you actually go for and how long can you sustain that for. And yeah, it's it's really interesting. It's something that's really giving me a, a spark for my running again. So I was going through a bit of a lull and not the really, with lockdown, no races, and thinking, well, what what's actually the point? And when you find your why again, it's like, well, you actually fall back in love with running, and to do it in such a beautiful setting is going to be absolutely fantastic. So again, it's a massive thanks to yourself for for getting the series going, but also through very very tough times to keep that series going. And and I mem- remember I said this before we started that you popped out an email saying that it was uh, uh, to reschedule or to get a refund and. In the structure of the training is offered so much more than just a race at the end of it so yeah can't thank you guys and i know it's not just yourself Kyle. So you've got a lot of team mind as well so yeah it's been been fantastic from that point of view but um with regards to recovery what would your your top tips be for recovery after the the 50 miler and rather than sign up straight away for the, the 100 <laughs> what would your, your top tips be for recovery well, well, other than you know, uh, other than drinking that that beer at the end of the race uh, in typical kind of ultra running fashion, uh, I, I certainly would think, not think, it's a long way. Fifty miles would take a, and and, and they, uh, just going back to what you said about the the whole point of you know going from doing an ultra and it, it's you don't have to run as fast as you would in a 5k or 10k and a half in marathon. And there is an element of fatigue in all of those races. Um, the good thing about an ultra is in that, what I see it as, as I'm getting older, I'm getting slower. So I can disguise my, my, my speed by doing ultras, you know? Uh, <laughs> and, and another thing about ultras, you don't necessarily have to know what your pace is. You can go by effort and you can relax and enjoy it a lot. But not to say there's, um, there's still an element of fatigue in there, which is really important that you, you address that. Um, and, and, and certainly the, the sort of immediate thing is making sure that you've got a, 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 you know, you're not just thinking, how am I going to recover? Think about it before you, in your taper, you know, think about how you're going to recover after this. You know, are you working the following day? Uh, do you have to take a day off or, you know, how are you going to get back home? You know, you're, yeah. or how are you going to get to your hotel accommodation? It's, it's a mile away. It's two miles away. You can't just jog back, folks. You know, <laughs> you, might, you might have to get a taxi. Is there taxis in this village? That I'm, you know, is there taxis in Cullen? Uh, so all these things you really have to think about and you have to prep your recovery just as much as you would you know, before you get to the start line of, of the race. Um, but, you know, for, for me in terms of recovery, recovery means, uh, you know, just taking a met physically, letting the body recover, letting it just soak in all the nutrients it needs, uh, all the hydration, all the fluids it needs, 
over and above beer. I'm 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 kind of half joking with the beer thing, folks. So don't just drink beer. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> maybe a running coach here, yeah. um, <laughs> but uh, but yeah, just make really important because it's going to be hot. It's likely to be hot. Um, in fifty miles, you're going to lose a lot of weight. You're going to lose a lot of weight, and you know, not necessarily. If we have to, we will weigh. We will weigh people um, if we think we're in a bad place. Um, so I've been weighed at the start of races, and at the end, I've lost kilograms. You know, like three or four or five kilograms, uh, and that's just fluids. It's not body fat. I mean, it's probably an element of body fat in it. Um, so you're gonna have to really look after your body. Your body's gone through a lot of a lot of strain. Um, certainly, if you're racing at a full pelt, if you're still racing at but you're just taking it easy. You're still going to have a lot of recovery in there. 50 miles is a long way, as we said before. And, you know, you, you drive a car for 50 miles, you're running that, you know, it's, <laughs> it's, it's, a, it's a long way. Um, so, yeah, lots of food, lots of protein, you know, build things back protein-wise. Uh, your muscles, your ligaments, your connective tissue all require that. Carbohydrates, get them in you. Um, you know, you've lost a lot of glycogen in your muscles, your liver, your brain. Um, and then obviously your fluids that you need as well, making sure you've got the right electrolytes, a lot of salt will, will, will be required as well, replenished. So lots of fat as well. You know, there's all these things. I mean, I'm not a nutritionist, but that's for me. You know, I just make sure that I just eat all the foods and eat the right foods. You can still have some junk food, no doubt, because uh, you certainly deserve it. But uh, that's for me, that's what I would do. And then just mentally, the, the mental side of doing something like that, you've, you've prepped, you've, put your body through a lot of training, you've put your mind through a lot of training, you've invested a lot of your training into this, you know, you're, you know, you're, you're, you, James, is, you're a busy guy, you know, you're, you're a family man now, you know, you're a dad, you're, you're working, you're building a business, you've got to, you've, you've got, you, you, you've, you've, you've done this big thing, you're training as well, like, what, something, you, you you're going to get a low, you know, you, you're going to get a low point yeah. and you have to be prepared for that low point and how that looks and just busy your mind with other things and find something else to fill that void uh, rather than just going back out and just, you know, just take take a bit of time to reflect on what you've done and be so proud of yourself for, for, for just doing what you've done because it's no mean feat, regardless of you're the, 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 you know, the first person past that line or you're the last person. It's uh, a huge feat. Uh, huge 50 miles is 50 experience. miles, regardless how fast yeah. you go. Yeah. yeah. Um, and think about all that investment that you've put into that as well. It's, it's, yeah. it's well deserved and it doesn't, you should you celebrate it as well. Not there's, just, a, there's a few questions came in for you, Kyle, if you don't mind taking them. All oh, right. I didn't realize it's questions. I, I hope they're good. I hope they're uh, not negative. Questions. No, some good <laughs> questions. Do. I'm just going to scroll back through, just bear me two seconds. So the first one I've got here is, uh, it was David Scott. He was asking, um, sorry, where will the 100 mile run start and finish? And does it go clockwise or anti-clockwise? Was his question for the 100 miler. Is this, uh, is this Dave who's asked the question? Is uh, Dave, Dave Scott, yeah. Well, that's uh, <laughs> it's a good question. <laughs> we've... we've uh, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of stumbling here with my words. Um, we, we will be revealing that quite soon. Uh, the, the handbook's actually getting made as we speak. So um, I'll, I'll give you a more definitive answer in the next couple of weeks. And the other question we had was about the other um, route, the Dava Way. Um, is there aid stations on the Dava Way or is it just a, or is there a bag drop or is it just a straight shoot? Because I know that before when it was in, COVID restrictions, it was going to be a straight shoot because it, it wasn't very accessible, I believe, to have any like water stations or anything like that. But that was another question that came in from I think it was yeah, yes. Yeah. So there, there will be aid stations in terms of bag drop. Um, we're not going to do bag drop for the 50k. Uh, the main reason for it, it's a lot shorter than than what the um yeah. what the 50 mile would be because it's it's not a, a mountainous type event as well you know it's it's not you know 50 kilometers is it's not going to be too much off what people's marathon time is going to be obviously it'll be a you know a little bit slower because it's on trails a little bit of elevation and things but yeah there'll be aid stations um fair in terms of aid stations will be they'll be well but you know it'll be a, a few, enough to make sure that you get to the, the finish so 
don't worry too much about that. Um, the one thing that's important with the ultra events as well is we you do rely on a lot of what you do to be self-supported. Um, what I mean by that is, firstly, you can you get races that are huge, just fully self-supported. You you go and that's you. You 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 get your way around. But you know we're, we're making sure that there's a mix there. There's an element of us supporting you as a as a runner, but also making sure that you've got um you can control the controllables as well. So if you're doing the Mary Coastal Trail 50, for me personally, I make sure that I can get to A to, you know, from um from forest to lossy mouth awesome, in yeah. a bag drop with basically what I've got in my pouch basically. Um, and I would obviously use have water and things in the aid stations. So um but I would try and make sure I'm, I've got enough to get me through there uh, in case something happens. So there might, hopefully not, but one thing, if there's an unexpected, maybe not for my event, but other events, other things, you know, say, for example, some you, there's water's ran out or water's not been delivered, making sure that you've got a, a, you know, you've got a backup there as well. Um, you know, for, for me, I've been in a position, I've done a race, and luckily it was only 10K and there's been no water, and you're like, oh, God. <laughs> And it's been a really hot day, but I've got myself to the end. But yeah, it's maybe not a good example. I think that the the big thing what I'm picking up from there is that you, everyone trains with different things, and you can't have all that supply that one race. So what you train with, you've got to kind of supply yourself, and the the essentials will be there to give calories. But it might not be what you've trained with, so it's important to have what you you have trained with. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. So perfect. Yeah. And I don't think there's any more. I was quickly just checking. There's no more questions uh, there. Um, one last thing. So, like my my complete journey from couch to, to fifty miles has been absolutely life changing. I remember uh, listening to a podcast and saying that when you come out the other side with fifty miler, you're not the same person as you were when you started. So, I'm I'm looking forward to that experience. But also, what advice would you give to anyone that wants to stop at marathon and is too too scared to take that that step into to ultra what would you recommend for them because i can't i can't say that because i've not done it yet but what would you say to somebody that, that wishes to go that extra bit further there or is a wee bit apprehensive about going into to the 50 kilometer 50 mile 100 kilometers 100 mile distances i i think for me you know it's uh even even as a seasoned runner it's it's still a scary thing to go past a marathon uh, I think it's um I think it's the whole uh sorry my, my computer's about to reboot wait I press no it's okay <laughs> didn't reboot uh, but yeah um it's it's a big thing to do it's a big undertaking uh I was uh, mine wasn't too bad because I, I've been doing marathons and then all I had to do was 50k so it was only five more miles whereas your first ultra race I know you did the Dava one but your first ultra race is going to be 50 miles you know it's double marathon basically <laughs> so i'd be more nervous uh that if i was in your position than i was for me um but the good thing about these things if you've done your training you've been consistent with your training you've done the miles you don't have to go up to your full mileage to complete it so anyone listening thinking i've never done yeah, say they've done a marathon, they've never done a 50k, but they want to take part in a 50k. Um, they don't have to go up to 50k in a training run to, to complete it. You know, the body's an amazing thing. Um, there's people out there who are in their 80s, whoever lucky enough to be able to do these things. You, you, you know, some, some of these events, there's cutoffs and things. Our one's fairly generous and it's, it's allowed, it's, it's meant to be accessible to as many runners as we can. And it is a run and it's a foot race at the end of the day. Um, but, you know, you'd be surprised. You'd be hugely surprised what the body can do. Um, and I've been hugely surprised what my body can do. Um, and, and I've also been surprised what my body can't do uh, with, with, with failing to, whatever, you, whatever the saying is, failing to prepare, preparing to fail, whatever it is. Um, and I've done races and I'll go back to this one. The hard mirror is 80. Uh, you know, I I, took, I did Chicago Marathon. I took my foot off the gas. I, I did what I told you you should do after not a race. Just you know, unwind, just chill out, eat whatever you need to do, and just kind of take a back step from running for a bit to reset, recharge your batteries and things. 
Uh, I mean, I, I I certainly recharged my batteries, but I didn't recharge my running legs, and I decided <laughs> to do eighty miles straight off the bat, thinking I was still in the shape that I was, you know, two and a half months ago, or maybe less than that, two months ago, and um, with very little training. You know, I'm talking like fifteen miles, fifteen miles a week, and then I was going to do an eighty miles, thinking I've got my legs to run fast, not just. And it was really cocky, me, and I'll I'll never forget how cocky I sounded. Um, it was, I, I, you know, I wasn't looking just to win. I was looking at how, how, a lot, how much am I going to win by? And I ended up coming like, I wasn't even the first Kyle in the race. And there's not that many Kyles. <laughs> and, and uh, you know, when I, when I saw the, a 60-year-old, and she was a granny, a 60-year-old plus year old granny going past me, wasn't past me in her, her run or hiking poles. That, you know, and, the, and basically her shouting, come on, you're doing really well. And I'm like... Uh, I, you know, I'm going to be a, a GB runner here, and I'm like really struggling. To, and it's so true that, that my, my body the races can up. humble you. Yeah, the yeah. racing can humble you, and yeah. the race owes you nothing. So if you yeah. don't, if you don't give it the respect it's due, then you know it's it, it gives exactly. you nothing. Same yeah. with a marathon; it's like you can't just turn up and do a marathon. It, it, it owes you absolutely yeah. nothing. Yeah. And I think that's the rewarding thing about you know ultras is you can't you know you've got to put in the the preparation, but you don't have to. You can still there's a spectrum of how quick you want to go um but just just make sure that when you're doing your training and believe in what you can do believe in your training believe in the process but you know don't be delusioned by the distance as well uh you know it's a, it's a long way so you have to mentally prepare for it and do your long runs you know do your have consistency in your training um and you know make sure that it's specific to what you're you're aiming for as well don't just go out and do you know a couple of miles and think you're going to be fine for a 50 mile race and i know you haven't done that james i was checking this strap you look like you're <laughs> doing your job right so yeah good job there yeah so, excellent kyle i won't take up any more of your time but uh i really appreciate you jumping on and, and sharing some gems and also uh doing such a great job to promote the the, the Mori coast itself and i think that what you said is that Maury is very humble in its beauty, and I think you yourself are very humble in your um, achievements as well. And for you to give up your, I know your time to come on tonight, I really do appreciate it. Um, how can people find out about signing up to the the series? Is it the the website the best place to go, or is there a Facebook site for the the Maury, um series itself? Yeah, well, thanks for the kind words, James. It's always it's always a pleasure to speak to you about you know running and uh, yeah. And secondly, getting my body back back together again, which is <laughs> most of the time I chat to you. Um, but uh, yeah, yeah, um, you know, the moneywayultras.com is my website, uh, the, the race website. So if yeah, if you you know if you want to check it out and check the races that are on offer, then yeah, feel free to click on them, and that'll take you to the entry the entry link as well. Um, if you want to contact me as well, then you know just give me a shout. Uh, personally and i can you know, any advice any training advice or you know anything about the races I'll, I'll be more than happy to get in touch with you and, and share share the you know share my information and, and also a great service you offer now is the, the trs training which um even just on the hour tonight you've shared so much wealth and to have somebody like yourself in your corner if you are training would be fantastic so that's at trs training on instagram as well is that correct yeah 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 thank you james uh yes it's uh, trs-training.com is the, the website as well and uh yeah mainly doing running coaching at the moment which has been hugely rewarding and uh, i know you've had some athletes uh who've, who've you know kind of hope i wouldn't say too much it's not good if they're coming to you all of them eh? <laughs> <laughs> Shows i think, I think the, big, back, yeah. the big thing is that the the way we we see it in the clinic is that we're seeing different ways of training, which is brilliant. Yeah. And I think that that's fantastic. And I think that when you look at the research, the high proportion of runners do get injured. And I think that because they're only coming in for one session and going away and managing that, that's a true testament to the training plan and the adaptability of the training plan. And, and obviously, got to do a wee plug for ourselves at Spear, um, the, the injury clinic itself at the Sports Village, Paul Laurie, and also at West Hill. Uh, we've on Facebook and also got our website, spearingclinics.co.uk, I think it is as well. I'm not too 100% sure. But yeah, have a follow. And we're going to be doing a lot more Spear Speaks with a lot of great minds around the Northeast and, and just a wee bit further afield as well. So yeah, thank you very much, Callan. I appreciate your time. 
Right, right. Well, it's been a pleasure to come on, and uh, yeah, and I'll I'll see you next week at the race briefing uh, <laughs> as well. It's mandatory, even though you've rambled. And yes, yeah. Extracted Definitely. some information. So, and good luck, good luck for the race. Uh, you'll absolutely smash it. So, thank you very much. Awesome. Thank you. All right. Cheers. <laughs>